Hey, what's up everybody on YouTube land? Hope you're doing good today. Um, it is raining like crazy here. So hopefully wherever you're at, you're enjoying some uh, good weather and not torrential downpour like here in central Florida right now. But anyways, I wanted to talk to you guys about a topic that a lot of people think about and it affects a lot of people around the world, in particular uh, Americans, and that is weight loss. Um, I made the title weight loss, is it simple or complicated? And the answer to that uh, is both, actually. Mathematically speaking, um, from an on-paper standpoint, it's very easy. Uh, it literally, to lose weight, is literally you consume less calories than you use. And to gain weight, you consume more calories than you use. That's literally it. It's calories in versus calories out. That's the simple explanation, uh, but it is also complicated and people's weight loss or weight gain can be affected by multiple different factors. Um, yeah, I actually listened to a lecture today and took some notes because I felt like sharing this with you guys. I, uh, I'm a senior in college right now, and uh, my degree is in health science, but I have a minor in nutrition, so I'm entering my last two semesters of my undergrad degree and hopefully plan on being a dietitian eventually. So I'll be looking at that and grad school next year. Anyways, um, so this is one of the classes that I took. It was sports nutrition, and I found it very interesting and helpful in a lot of ways. Um, but today I listened to a lecture that is basically talking about obesity around the world and obesity in America in particular and how it's such a big issue. A um, couple of things that, that people may not know is um, that 71.6%, this data is, is as of 2017, 71.6% of Americans are overweight with almost 40% of them being obese. So that's a huge, huge issue uh, for our, our country in particular here in America. Uh, it does affect countries around the world as well. Uh, I believe England, or not England, but the United Kingdom came in second, and Brazil, I believe, was in the top five. Australia was was ranked pretty high up there as well. Uh, and it's something that is becoming more and more of an issue as time goes on. Uh, if you actually, you, you can look up uh, the, you know, statistics yourself, um, but you can see since the 1960s, a drastic increase worldwide uh, in the number of overweight and obese individuals. Like I said, especially here in the States. So um, to get into the, the complicated issues uh, that could, I would say, hamper your ability in particular to lose weight because that's the issue, but also, you know, th there are people with the issue of being underweight. I myself was underweight growing up as a kid. And it wasn't for a lack of trying, it's uh, I had just a hyper fast metabolism and uh, you know, other things like that. So a very energetic, I was very, very active. So I probably uh, could have eaten a lot more than I did, but 
the amount of food that I would have had to eaten to be normal weight would have been a lot more than the average child. So I was typically always underweight. So I was very active, ate a normal amount, maybe even a little less than normal. And so therefore I was underweight. So that's an issue as well. But there are a lot of things that play into uh, weight loss. So we'll talk about weight loss particularly because that seems to be a bigger issue than weight gain. So there are some, some uh, things that I was not aware of um, that I found very interesting that contribute to obesity in adulthood. Uh, one is uh, breastfeeding uh, when an infant. So it, apparently when uh, you go past three months and in particularly uh, six months or more um, being breastfed as an infant, you are your chances of being obese when you're an adult drastically decrease. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, C-sections apparently increase uh, up to two times uh, the potential of being obese or overweight as an adult. Uh, the... I guess you could say not really hyper consumption but uh, the consumption too much consumption of antibiotics when you're growing up increases your chance of being obese due to it killing off your gut microbacteria um, something else that uh, has contributed to Obesity is the introduction of high fructose corn syrup in a lot of our foods as an artificial sweetener. Um, believe it or not, being poor plays a role in uh, your likelihood of being obese. Uh, this is probably due to the fact that the less healthy, sugary uh, foods are cheaper. Uh, the pastas and rices and uh, you know things with hydrogenated oils and all that all that stuff is is cheap soda is cheap but um, you know the healthier organic foods grass-fed meats things like that those are all uh, way more expensive so income plays a role into this as well none of these are excuses by the way but they are things that I feel like shed some light on the reason that we have such an issue with this um, around the world. Um, there are multiple factors as well as far as hormones. Uh, people's hormones can be off. Uh, I know for men, testosterone plays a huge role, but also you have leptin, ghrelin, uh, your, your thyroid hormones. Uh, all those things, if they're uh, underproduced in the body, will make it harder for you to lose weight. And it'll also make you feel less energetic, which in turn is kind of a vicious cycle because if you don't have energy, you don't have the motivation to, say, exercise or whatever, then um, that's going to increase your likelihood of uh, gaining weight as well so you have that uh, obviously there are certain diseases uh, like Cushing syndrome uh, that increases the body's uh, cortisol levels which is a stress hormone so stress plays a role but um, there are certain diseases like that that um, affect weight gain as well so uh, those are very rare but they are out there. Uh, obviously genetics, and genetics I would say is gonna be kind of an all-encompassing over a lot of these, you know, because your genetics uh, affect everything. Not saying that you can't do anything about it, but 
it does affect uh, how your body uh, stores fat and what it does with nutrients, how your your central nervous system responds and the, you know tendencies to be deficient in certain hormones and and tendencies to have uh, higher levels of cortisol and be uh, maybe a more negative type person, uh, potentially how you were raised or genetically speaking. Um, also something to keep in mind is like the social aspect of it. Uh, I know growing up, I went to church a lot and after our church service, it was always uh, very common for us to go out to eat. So eating was a big social part of my life at that point. And, uh, it's a lot of times a, 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 a social aspect for even in different cultures, you know, uh, food is food is viewed as a social event a lot of times. So that can be something uh, that plays a role in weight gain is uh, if you are big into the social aspect of the food, obviously uh, you're going to want to eat more to fulfill that um, social need. Um, so there's the that there's the psych psychological issues um you know you've heard of comfort food or stress eating um you know those things play an issue as well when you're depressed uh you know sometimes you just want to watch netflix and eat a gallon of ice cream or something you know uh so that's a uh, psychological so psychology can affect weight gain or weight loss as well uh and something else that we get a lot of here in the States is marketing. I mean, how many billboards and TV commercials do you see that's always marketing the big greasy cheeseburgers or um, uh, trying to market uh, drinking a Pepsi or something like that? Or whenever you go to a movie theater, if you can even do that anymore. Um, but whenever we used to go to movie theaters, you know, they would uh, have the the little video of the Coke and popcorn and all that stuff. I mean, that's all psychological. That's all marketing. Uh, and those things will affect your appetite. You may not actually be hungry, but it causes a, a reaction in your brain and it sends a signals to your body that make you think that you want to eat those things. So psychologically speaking, uh, those are some issues that uh, we face as well. Um, obviously, sugar intake. I mean, um, that kind of goes along with uh, high fructose corn syrup, uh, sweeteners and things like that. Um, yeah, I mean, there are, there are multi, multi-factorial issues going on when it comes to weight loss and why it can be more difficult. So, like I said, it is complicated because of all the external issues that could be going on, um, but it's also very simple. And like I said, none of these are excuses because you can do something about all of them. Um, even, even certain genetic disorders, I mean, if you go to the doctor and they can prescribe you medication. If you have low thyroid, you can be prescribed thyroid medication. Uh, low testosterone, like I go to um, Titan Medical Center here in Tampa and I'm on testosterone replacement therapy with them. So uh, vitamins and minerals and different things like that. I, I also get injectable vitamins and minerals through them as well and amino acids. Um, but if you have a, 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 you know, your your local primary care doctor or somewhere you can get blood work, anywhere, it doesn't really matter, but, you know, you can get these medical issues taken care of. Uh, so they're not an excuse, but it should be something that if you're, if you're trying to lose weight and you're having a really hard time, uh, you're having issues with, uh, you know, I don't know, certain cravings and things like that, those can all be issues that are related to hormones and um, vitamin deficiencies. So 
get blood work taken, uh, go to the doctor. Um, you could go to a specialty clinic like I do, or you can go to your primary care or whatever, you know, uh, whatever is in your uh, insurance provider area um, and get these issues taken care of uh, because there are a lot of different things that could be playing into it. Um, so get the complicated stuff figured out, you know, if uh, get your thyroid checked, get your hormone checked, get your all your hormones checked, uh, do a complete blood panel, and then, um, you know, address those things, address the stress in your life, um, address the psychological issues, you know, uh, you may need to talk to someone, you may need to um, be on some sort of medication for depression or something like that. That all plays into this. Um, so those are the, the complicated issues that play into it. But once you get those complicated issues um, taken care of and figured out, after that, it's very simple. You just eat less than you expand during the day. So... You can do this by obviously eating less and you can add exercise, which burns calories as well. That's pretty simple. Um, there are a lot of different diets out there, you know, from that range from vegan to carnivore, keto, caveman diet, uh, vegetarian, pescatarian, Atkins diet, all kinds of stuff. There, There's all kinds of diets. So which diet is the best? Honestly, the one that you can follow, uh, I'm not giving you uh, uh, advice on which one is the most healthy or anything like that. I have my own type of thing that I do, um, but you know, everyone's different. And the one that you can follow is the best one for you. Uh, the one that you can get all your nutrients in while being in a caloric deficit is the one that you should do. And you should be able to follow this long term. So you can start out pretty simply by making small changes. I mean, if you're someone who drinks, you know, a 12 pack of Coke a day, well, maybe, you know, start bumping that down a little bit. Maybe switch over to a Diet Coke once in a while. Drink a little more water. Replace replace those sugary drinks with, with uh, water or artificial sweetened drinks. I'm not going to get into the debate of, you know, the uh, whether or not artificial sweeteners are healthy or not. Again, we're simply talking about weight loss or weight gain, but mainly weight loss. So you can start making small changes like that. Um, just eat a little less, smaller portions. Um, there are multiple things that you can do on the simpler side of this to bring down your calorie count. Um, start going to the gym, start to just taking a walk. You don't even have to go to the gym. Gyms cost money. Gyms sometimes, you know, people don't like it for whatever reason. They don't, they don't want to walk on a treadmill. I'd, I'd prefer to walk outside than on a treadmill. So start taking, uh, walks every morning or every evening after dinner or something like that. Um, that's a, a nice, easy, simple way to, um, burn some calories and de-stress yourself, which in turn will lower cortisol levels and, and help you mentally and physically. Um, so once you get all these things in balance, then, then weight loss becomes pretty simple. Uh, that was the uh, main stuff I wanted to share. I just found a lot of that interesting. I, I found the fact that uh, C-sections and breastfeeding and, is and, and issues like that um, actually affecting uh, obesity rates as adults to be to be kind of eye-opening and again it's not an excuse but it could explain why you know you may struggle more than the next person so obviously go to your doctor get everything checked out go to your psychiatrist or whatever and get everything checked out get all your issues uh taken care of all the complicated stuff figured out then after that it's simple all right hopefully this video helped uh, i know it's kind of long but uh, if you got anything out of it, please like, subscribe to my channel. Uh, I try and do videos on multiple different topics. I'll do stuff on health and fitness and 
metaphysical things or, you know, different things I'll learn at school or whatnot. Uh, my opinions on stuff. It doesn't matter. Uh, just multiple things. I'll probably go on. I do go on rants sometimes as well. So if you like a variety pack or a sampler platter of videos, <laughs> I would suggest uh, subscribing to my channel and who knows what you'll get tomorrow. All right. You guys have a great day. Thanks for listening.